Kia ora. Robert McLaughlin here. Welcome to uh, the first lecture of week 8 for 160.204, Differential Equations 1. Now, there's no new material today. This is just going to be another example of solving a linear diff constant coefficient system of differential equations. Last time we looked at a, uh, an equation with a 2 by 2 matrix, so two dependent variables, x1 and x2. This time we'll do a three-dimensional uh, initial value problem, so we'll have x1, x2, and x3 all bundled up together in that vector x. And as we saw last time, we're going to look for solutions of the form x equals e to the lambda t times some vector k, a constant vector with just numbers in there. And we saw that that would be a solution if lambda was an eigenvalue of the coefficient matrix and k was an eigenvector. So that means we need to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and that's what's going to take up the bulk of this uh, example. Now, a minus lambda i just means to subtract lambda from the diagonal. And taking care to copy out the rest of the matrix with no change. So there is a minus lambda i. And I need to take the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. Now there are different ways to calculate determinants of a matrix, and sometimes one way is easier than another. And in this case I notice that row 2 here has a lot of zeros in it. So I should do what's called a cofactor expansion along row 2, because it's only in fact got one non-zero number in it. That will give me a22, which is 2 minus lambda with a plus sign in front of it, times the determinant of that matrix with row 2 and column 2 crossed out. That's the cofactor of that element. Cross out row 2, column 2, I get 1 minus lambda for 1, 1 minus lambda. Evaluate that determinant. I get 1 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus 1 times 4 minus 4. And to find the eigenvalues, I'm going to set that equal to 0 and solve for lambda. Now what you do not want to do at this point is to expand out that expression. That will give you a cubic polynomial, lambda cubed plus something, which you're going to have to find the roots of, which would mean factoring it. Now since it's already partly factored, you do not want to expand it out. So this will be equal to 0 either when this factor is 0 or where this factor is 0. Now if you had worked out the determinant another way, for example by expanding along the first row, it wouldn't have come out in this factored form and you would have had a lot more work to do. So the, uh, the roots of that polynomial are either when lambda equals 2 or when the second factor is 0, that's when 1 minus lambda squared is equal to 4. That's when 1 minus lambda is plus or minus the square root of 4, plus or minus 2. So that means lambda is equal to 1 plus or minus 2, 3 or negative 1. So the eigenvalues are 2, 3, and negative 1. So this is the case of non-repeated real eigenvalues. So this is the simplest case. I think we called it case 1 earlier. That means for each eigenvalue, I have to compute an eigenvector. The eigenvectors will be guaranteed to be linearly independent when the eigenvalues are different, when they're distinct numbers. That will give me my three linearly independent solutions, and I will have solved the differential equation. I'll know the general solution. Then I can plug in the initial value that's given and find the solution for that particular initial value. So, there's a little bit of algebra to do here. Now I have to go through each eigenvalue in turn and um, compute the eigenvector. So here we go. Just copy out that matrix. When lambda equals 2, a minus lambda i is equal to, I just look at my uh, blue matrix there where the lambda is written, plug in lambda equals 2, and I get minus 1, 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. Now to 
to solve with this matrix times a vector equal to zero, that means I'm finding the null space of this matrix. That means I have to row reduce it, which means I have to do row operations. And I see I have a row of zeros there, so I won't have to do anything with that. But initially what I'm going to have to do is replace row 3 by row 3 plus row 1, because that will introduce a zero. So essentially this is acting as my first pivot element. That will give me minus 1, 1, 4, 0, 0, 0, row 3 plus row 1, 0, 2, 3. Now I can swap row 2 and row 3. Minus 1, 1, 4, 0, 2, 3, 0, 0, 0. And this matrix is now in row echelon form. These are the pivot elements. That means the final element of the... Uh, I can vector. I'll write out the three equations. So now I go minus K1 plus k2 plus 4k3 equal to 0, 2k2 plus 3k3 is equal to 0. And to solve them, I can set k3 to be either a free parameter or any particular number. So I'm just going to choose k3 is equal to 2, because that will give me a nice integer value for k2. It will give me negative 3. Substitute those into the first equation. K1 will then be equal to K2 plus 4K3 equals 2 minus 12. It's negative 10. No, it's not. I've made a mistake. Let's do that one again. K2 was negative 3. 4K3 is 8. It's 5. Nothing like checking as you go along. That looks a bit better. So my eigenvalue, I'll call the first eigenvalue 2. Its eigenvector is going to be 5, negative 3, 2. So I have found one solution of the differential equation, which is x equals e to the 2t, 5, negative 3, 2. Now, eigenvectors are not unique because any multiple of an eigenvector, any non-zero multiple, is also an eigenvector. So I could have chosen, for example, k3 equals 1, and I would have got out uh, a related solution which would, would have still generated the same general solution. Okay, let's do the next eigenvalue. Let's take uh, negative 1. a minus negative 1 times i is equal to two one four zero three zero one one two. Now I have to row reduce this matrix, so my pivot element will be the first non-zero element in the first row. I have to use this element to introduce zeros below it. There's already one zero there, so I just need to work on row 3. I'll replace row 3 by 2 row 3 minus row 1, because that will give me a zero. It gives me 2, 1, 4, 0, 3, 0, because I'm not changing row 2. 2 times 1 minus 2 is 0. 2 times 1 minus 1 is 1. 2 times 2 minus 4 is 0. Now I move on to row 2. The first non-zero element in row 2 is the 3. That will become my pivot element. That can be used to introduce zeros below it in the second column. And I'm going to do that by replacing row 3 by 3, row 3 minus row 2, because row 2 is my pivot row. And that's just going to give me a 0 row at the end. 2, 1, 4, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 0. These are my pivots. 
So my free parameter is column three, the non-pivot column. I can choose K3 to be anything. So my equations now read 2K1 plus K2 plus 4K3 is equal to zero. And the second equation is 3K2 equal to zero. Well, that one's easy to solve. So for this one, I will set K3 equal to any convenient non-zero number. I'm going to choose one. Solve this equation, I get K2 equals zero. Now I know K2 and K3, I can substitute into the first equation and I get K1 is going to be minus a half of K2 plus 4K3, which is minus a half of zero plus four, which is negative two. So the eigenvector that goes with the eigenvalue negative one is negative two, zero, one. Okay, we'll hang in there because we're not done yet. Now we're going to do the third eigenvalue, which means writing down a minus three i, which is negative two, one, four, zero, negative one, zero, one, one, negative two. I have to find the null space of this matrix. I have to row reduce it. This is my first pivot element. So I'm going to replace row three by two row three plus row one, because that will introduce a zero. And I get negative two, one, four, zero, negative one, zero. Two times one plus negative two is zero. Two times one plus one is three. Two times negative two plus four is zero. And I see when I row reduce this one using this pivot element, I'll go row three plus three row one and I'll get a zero row. So let's just skip ahead a little bit and say I've done that and that's my row reduced form. So my equations are now minus two K one plus K two plus four K three equals zero and minus k2 equals zero. Because lambda was chosen to be an eigenvalue, that means a minus lambda i must be a singular matrix, a non-invertible matrix, which means when you row reduce it, you must get at least one zero row at the end. So that's a check on your algebra. Uh, choose k3 to be equal to one, that means k2 is zero, and that means k1 is now equal to a half, of k2 plus 4k3, that is a half of 0 plus 4, that is 2. So the third eigenvector is equal to 2, 0, 1. So I've done. I've found three eigenvalues. For each eigenvalue I found an eigenvector, and that means I now know the general solution to the differential equation. to be c1 e to the lambda 1. The first eigenvalue was 2. And there I'm going to put the eigenvector plus any other constant times the second eigenvalue, which was negative 1, times its eigenvector, plus c3 times e to the 3t times its eigenvector, which is 2, 0, 1. And I just look back at my working and I see that the eigenvectors for those other ones were 5, negative 3, 2, and negative 2, 0, 1. That's the general solution to the differential equation. And for any, um, for any initial value, I will be able to find unique values of C1, C2, and C3 that satisfies the differential equation and the initial value. Now, the initial value in this case, x at time 0, was supposed to be 1, 3, 0. And if I substitute t equals 0 into the general solution, 
Well, it's quite convenient because e to the 2t is 0, e to the minus t is 0, and e to the 3t is 0. So I get this vector must be equal to c1 times 5, negative 3, 2, plus c2 times negative 2, 0, 1, plus c3 times 2, 0, 1. Each row of that vector equation must be satisfied. So what I have here is three linear equations and three unknowns. The unknowns are C1, C2, and C3. So I'm just going to rewrite that as a matrix system. 5, negative 3, 2, negative 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, times C, vector C, C1, C2, C3, is equal to 1, 3, 0 because a matrix times a vector is equivalent to taking that linear combination of the columns of the matrix where the coefficients are given by this vector, C. How do you solve a linear system like this? You write down the augmented matrix and you row reduce it. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is going to be my pivot element. I want to use that to introduce zeros below it. So in row 2 is going to become, I'll just choose the numbers to get uh, convenient values. I want to go 5 times row 2 plus 3 times row 1. And down in the row 3 column 1 position, I want to go 5 times row 3 minus 2 times row 1. That will give me 5, negative 2, 2, 1, 0, negative 6, 6, 18, 0, 9, 1, negative 2. And before I continue, I see I have a common factor in row 2, so I will scale row 2 and replace that by uh, 1 sixth of row 2, giving me 5, negative 2, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 3, 0, 9, 1, and negative 2. This now becomes my pivot, the first non-zero element in row 2. And to use that to introduce zeros below that, I want to replace row 3 by row 3 plus 9 row 2. That will give me, rows 1 and 2 don't change, Zero, zero, ten, twenty-five. So, my last equation now says ten k three is equal to twenty-five. So that says k three is equal to twenty-five over ten, which is five over two, two and a half. So now you do the back substitution step. Having taken the last equation and solved for k three, you can substitute that into the second to last equation and solve for k two substitute those into the first equation and solve for k1. So we can do that now. The second equation says uh, minus k2. Sorry, why am I calling them k's? That's, they should be c's, shouldn't they? I'm confused with earlier. c2 minus c2 plus c3 is equal to 3. That's from this row here. That means C2 is equal to C3 minus 3, which is minus a half. The first equation from this row says 5C1 minus 2C2 plus 2C3 is equal to 1. Therefore, 5C1 is equal to 2c2 minus 2c3 plus 1. That is equal to 2c2 is negative 1. 2c3 is 5. So it's minus 1, minus 5, plus 1. That's minus 5. So c1 is equal to minus 1. So I have found all the coefficients. And now I know the solution to the initial value. 
c1 is negative 1, c2 is negative 1 half, and c3 is 5 over 2. So again, it is a little bit of a work to uh, solve a complete initial value problem, but the important point is that it's algorithmic. It's step by step. It works in theory for a system of any size. It just takes more work. For a larger system, it would be done on a computer. The important point is there is an algorithm which will solve any initial value problem of this type. Thank you very much.